My name is Peter Privet and I'm a Church of England vicar. The other bit of my time is taken up with being a textile artist. And these are called the Garments of Gethsemane and in a sort of way they've brought together the two parts of my life. I'm often asked, why on earth did you make these? And um, one simple answer is that after the Twin Towers came down, the churches in Hereford had a conference about suffering. And I was asked to make a hanging for that conference to be a visual focus. And so on Shrove Tuesday, I started to make the hanging. Um, by lunchtime, I was in a terrible mood because everything had gone wrong. Um, the bits of material had started coming away from one another and uh, that's part of my ineptitude, I suppose, because you put silk and you put canvas together and they're not gonna hang properly. So I threw the material in the corner in disgust and in a bit of a temper. After that, once I'd calmed down, I came back upstairs again and picked up this heap of material which had gone wrong and somehow I threw it over my shoulder and um, suddenly thought, oh, this isn't going to be a banner or a hanging, this is going to be a garment. So started ripping the pieces even more and started sewing different pieces together. It lasted from pancake day right through to the night before Easter. Often working at six o'clock in the morning and very often finishing at midnight and not even thinking that time had passed. And uh, the garments, I had no plan for them at the very beginning, except that that moment when I knew they were going to be garments, it was as if they had a life of their own. As I was working on this red garment, the next garment came into my mind. And as I was working onto that one, the next one came. So it was a whole process. And it was about giving yourself into the process. Not to fight against things, uh, but to sort of just give in and allow to happen what was going to happen. Well, they're called the Gethsemane Garments, um, partly because the conference was called Suffering and Gethsemane, and refers to the story in the Bible where Jesus is struggling on the night before he dies about whether he can face pain or not. And so, hence, Gethsemane Garments. This is the first garment. There were gaps appearing. Silk was pulling away from Hessian. If this is about suffering and pain, then yes, we need to rip these, these holes even more and make it look as if it's um, being ripped apart. And so that led me into thinking about the world being ripped apart. And so the texts, the, the writing that's on it, is trying to describe uh, the anguish and the pain uh, that faces many people's lives today in the world. And then I thought, oh, well, these rips that have appeared, they look a bit like mouths. And perhaps these are the mouths of people um, crying their pain. And then that led me on to thinking how important it is to actually speak about things. Because what dictatorship wants is for people to keep silent and not talk about their pain. And that led me on to thinking, what about the people who can't talk about their pain? So then it's people like you and me that need to speak about it for them. So hence, the red garment, which tries to give voice to the pain of the world. So this is the second garment in the series. This is the purple garment. The garments were made in order. So the red one was made first about the cries of anguish and the need to express in words the suffering of the world. This garment perhaps is similar, but it, it has a different feel. It's entirely shredded, and I guess it comes from those parts of the world where the only way to express pain and anguish is to just rip your clothes. Um, originally, this was very beautiful material, actually, and I bought it um, in pristine condition, but it was just too, too nice. 
And so I, uh, there was a week spent ripping this up and shredding it and dripping paint on it and muddying it up a bit. It just, it needs to look more disheveled. Uh, and what we've got here are texts that I guess I suppose are not just about the words of pain, but about the emotions. So I guess the, the obvious one here is, um, uh, every night I flood my bed with tears, I drench my couch with weeping. This garment is trying to express some of the awful things uh, that people say. Um, on the back here, uh, there's, there's a text that says, um, I am clothed with cursing as a coat. So this is getting into the sometimes uncomfortable emotions that are expressed with pain. And I, I think the other thing about this garment is that sometimes when we are confronted with the most awful things in life, words just won't do. We have to find other languages to express this. Also on here is a, just a simple phrase, um, save me. It, it's a deep emotional response. One of the most difficult things I find when I'm confronted with this experience is I want to solve it, I want to make it better. But then I know that when somebody tries to help me out when I'm feeling like this, I just want to scream even more. Um, because I think this garment calls for another language to be used, and, and it's the language that is not about words. And so perhaps the most important message of this garment is that when I'm confronted with something like this, uh, what's needed most is um, for somebody to just be there. Uh, so this is the third uh, garment, it's the green garment, and as you can see, it looks a little different to the others. It's much more slippery and fragile and sometimes really difficult to arrange it on the stand uh, because it's made from quite flimsy, uh, thin material. It's also made from recycled material, which seemed to be an appropriate material to use for the theme of hope. Um, bits of old neck curtains and my trousers and um, other bits that were hanging around. And I guess what this garment is saying is that it's not denying the whole thing of pain and the emotional response. It's saying that because of that, and if I sit alongside somebody and not try to preach to them or talk to them, but allow them to experience that pain, then it may be that small green shoots of hope may become apparent naturally because we've allowed the other things to happen. This is also important about allowing people to find their own way of telling their own story. The other theme is the theme of remembering, remembering who you are, remembering your story. Uh, and remembering, in a sense, is not just that remembering, but to remember, uh, to reassemble yourself again. And that remembering is really important because what dictatorships don't want is they don't want people to remember who they are. They, they much prefer people to sing from the same hymn sheet, to be exactly the same as, as everybody else. And so perhaps what this garment is also about is uh, the remembering not just my story, but also the remembering of your story as well. At the very beginning of uh, this process of making these garments, I didn't know what was going to happen. But what I did know was that as I was making the green garment, I knew that the last one 
would be a coat and that it would be made of strips of white linen. And the last stitch of this garment went on at about midnight, just before Easter Sunday. And, and as I put the coat on the stand, suddenly um, this great opening appeared. And that seemed to be important too. And the thought went through my head, oh, is this a tomb uh, where death lies? Originally, this was designed uh, to go on top of all the garments altogether. And my original thought was that the red one would be on one stand, the sackcloth garment would go on to the red one, and then the green one would go on to those two, and this one would enfold them all. It seemed to me that this new life, this resurrection, isn't about easy resurrection or easy new life. This new life only comes because we've been through the experience of the others. So then I thought, oh, this is looking too nice. <laughs> and so uh, the next thing I thought was, ah, yes, this must have a scarf of nails. There's something about that this can only happen with the whole thought of being pierced and wounded. It's, it's being wounded that creates the new thing. And then um, it's really interesting because not only could this be a tomb, but this is uh, an opening uh, that enfolds um, things. And so this led me on to thinking that, oh yes, this does need to be an open garment so that uh, in a, of an invitation to, to be uh, enfolded and the whole theme of hospitality came into my head. There is a story that is in the New Testament where Jesus is buried with a hundred pounds of weight of spice, which is a ridiculous amount of spice. And this is extravagance. And this struck me that this is true for this garment. This is about extravagant hospitality hospitality that makes no sense whatsoever, that doesn't try and close things down. It's about hospitality that keeps on opening up and opening up and welcoming. The other thing is it's white, and in some traditions, white is a sense of new life and resurrection. But there is also the opposite uh, in some traditions, because white is seen as a, as a sign of leprosy and a sign of decay. And so I think this is a very ambiguous garment, actually. The garments have been out in the public domain for over 10 years now. And what has been really interesting is, is that people have responded to them in many, many different ways. Um, how they're displayed, uh, how they respond to them. Some people have done drama to them. Some people have exhibited them in many, many different ways. And I guess the biggest lesson uh, that I've learned from this is that nothing is ever sewn up. The Gethsemane Garments by Peter Privet are part of Westerl Endowment's Touring Exhibition Programme, Create Talk. For more information about the availability of our exhibition resources, please contact Westerl Endowment. Visit our website at www.westhillendowment.org, email us on info at westhillendowment.org, or telephone us on 0121 472 8000.